Hey everyone, welcome to the Microsoft 365 Copilot Connection. My name is Nick Harris, and I am a Senior Copilot Cloud Solution Architect with Microsoft. Lately, I've been leveraging the Analyst Agent for a wide variety of use cases within my work, and I thought I would share some of my findings with all of you. So for today's video, we're going to share those particular findings. What we will do is we'll navigate through an initial overview of what the Analyst Agent is and how it works, and then we'll navigate directly into two unique use cases that I've directly leveraged the Analyst Agent for to showcase capabilities and ways that you can directly prompt with this agent to receive some form of value. And finally, once we're done with those use cases, we'll talk about some common customer questions as well as limitations around this new agent so you have all the information you need to make better informed decisions. So what is the Analyst Agent? So let's imagine having a virtual data scientist at your fingertips, one that can instantly analyze your spreadsheets, spot trends, and generate charts, all from a simple question. That's exactly what the Analyst Agent does within Microsoft 365. The Analyst Agent is a specialized AI assistant designed to help you make sense of complex data. Whether you're working with Excel files, textual-based data, data on the public-facing web, Analysts can interpret that data and provide clear, actionable insights. No coding or formula is required. So how does it work? Well, you start by opening Analyst Agent from the Copilot interface, and that's accessible either via Teams, Outlook, or directly from the Copilot app in the web. Then you just simply ask a question or provide a statement, such as, what are the sales trends for this quarter? Or, provide me data insights on this particular stock. The analyst agent then reads the data and reasons through it step by step and responds with a summary, often including charts or tables to help you visualize the findings. What makes analysts different from a regular chatbot experience is the advanced reasoning engine. It doesn't just give quick insights, it thinks like a human analyst, breaks down your question, tests ideas, and even writes and runs Python code behind the scenes. And the best part about all of this experience? Oh, you don't need to be a data expert. Analyst is designed for everyone, from marketers and project managers to finance teams and product leads. Just ask your question and Analyst does the heavy lifting. The Analyst agent will transform how you work with your data. It will save you time, it will reduce complexity in your work, and will empower you to make smarter, data-driven decisions. There's some really amazing things that the Analyst agent can do for you. Let's navigate through some use cases to show you some of the value. And these are personal use cases to me. I directly leverage the analyst agent to identify things like housing market trends. Maybe I want to move. Maybe I want to go to a different uh, suburb, local area. I want to understand data trends like average home cost, safety metrics, educational needs, things of that nature. I can do so with the analyst agent. I can also leverage it, of course, to analyze the stock market and various trends in stock. In our first use case, we'll be reviewing housing trends. So we'll have the analyst agent provide us housing trends for markets such as in Nashville, Tennessee, and Charlotte, North Carolina. We'll look at things like pricing, inventory levels, demand, and aggregating data sets, including affordability indexes, educational qualities, safety metrics, so on and so forth. All right, we've submitted our prompt. Let's go ahead and scroll down here a little bit. We have the initial material it's looking for. It's looking at housing metrics. It can search the public web, so it can identify data that exists on the public-facing web. In this case, we could indicate certain sourcing requirements. If we know where certain data sets are located, we can have the analyst agent aggregate those by either uploading them or telling uh, the analyst agent where that data is located on the web via the URL. So we have all this information being pulled back in. It's looking now through our next steps. We then have the top suburbs in 2025 for Nashville, Tennessee, median home prices, education requirements, a commute as well to the downtown area. Also the same for Charlotte, North Carolina. We see median home price. And now we see our recommendations. So we have uh, what it believes is the best suburb in Nashville, as well as Charlotte. Now, of course, like any co-pilot output, Please validate all of this data. You need to look at the references, citations, do your own research as well instead of just trusting what the AI gives you. It could be I run this again and it maybe looks at different metrics that it can pull. So that is a limitation. 
when you consider what is the exact data it's going and finding and pulling, it could pull from a different data source the next time, which would then aggregate different results for you the next time you run the prompt. So I would normally recommend maybe running it once or twice and then doing your own research and due diligence to ensure you're making fully informed decisions. Now, I think it's also very intriguing the fact that the analyst agent will also ask a discovery question at the very end. I do find these to be very helpful. As someone that's not really a data scientist or a data analyst, sometimes I'm really not sure what the analyst agent can do for me. So I might leverage some of this to say, oh yeah, I do want a downloadable data set or a visual comparison chart to aggregate the two data sets together and visualize them. Something to consider as you navigate through your conversations with this analyst. Now as our next prompt, what I want to do is I want to aggregate alignment with lifestyle preferences, such as access to parks, walkability and bike friendliness, maybe local amenities as well, what's around that local area that's easily accessible to me. I also want to assess the long-term value, such as indicating historical home price appreciation, planned infrastructure, and school district stability. So let's run this next prompt and see what we get. Again, we have our web sources built in. We can see some of the pricing-based information, Charlotte suburbs as well. And again, final recommendations. Now, oh, this is intriguing. So it's made final recommendations on two different cities compared to what we initially received. So if we look up here, the best suburbs initially based on our initial requirements were Brentwood and Davidson. And then based on our lifestyle preferences, it's Franklin and Tiga City. So for the next prompt we're going to run, we're going to analyze the proximity and access to major employment hubs. I'm also going to look at economic resilience. Now I ran that prompt and I think it's intriguing because it only focused on the two suburbs that were from the previous output and not the initial two suburbs we received from our very first prompt. So it might be that I need to analyze all of those together. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. In this case, we're going to focus on Tiga City and Franklin as we see here. So we have some information that we can go off of. Again, it's all pulling from public web information. We really haven't done any full analysis as of yet. We'll get to that here in a moment. But we have some great data and detail that the analyst agent can pull from. So for our final prompt, we've been doing a lot of research. And what I want to do here is I want to add my own context, such as my annual income, my employment, my household information, such as my marital status, my pets. So let's see what this final prompt gives us back. And so now we see the analyst agent is actually running Python code. We have all of the Python code accessible to us. So we can directly read and review this for transparency purposes. We have all the data and detail that we require. If it does fail, it will actively try again, rerun new code, feeding the errors back in. So we don't really need to develop anything. The analyst agent is doing that for us. And I do find the results to be very intriguing. We see here within its results, it's generated a table of data, estimated monthly and annual living expenses within those key cities. And we have the categories of data as well. Housing, utilities, transportation, groceries. It's also provided us discretionary income. It's even included after tax income. General note, these are all estimates. Never take financial advice directly from an AI, whether you're doing anything like budgetary cost analysis or stock market analysis, in this case, home affordability analysis, but we have the ability to have more informed data-driven decisions at our fingertips so we can ensure that we're making the right choice or the choice we believe is best for us. It's also navigated through some qualitative considerations like dog-friendly amenities, the IT job market, community fit. I can also see within particular cities, we have different you know, tech information like Amazon, Oracle, Dell, healthcare IT, strong tech and finance preference within Charlotte as well. It's a top 10 tech growth city. If I want to research a little bit more, I can go to those citations, of course. And so we see here now for our final recommendation, Tika K within South Carolina has the lowest cost of living with more discretionary income, strong IT job access via Charlotte, pet-friendly lifestyle, better community fit, and convenient travel to Chicago. Now, the very final thing that I want to note is we do have the ability to leverage Code Interpreter, since it does use Python code as well, but I like a downloadable PDF summary or a visual comparison. I can have the analyst agent provide me a downloadable file. 
If I want to send my data to a Word file, a PDF, a PowerPoint presentation, an Excel file, I can have it export the data. Now for our next use case, we're gonna to talk to the analyst agent about the stock market. So let's do some stock market analysis. So my prompt will be, as a novice investor, I'm trying to understand when is a good time to invest. I'm looking at Microsoft Corporation and I want to know a good price point when I should buy the stock. I want this analyst agent to become my stock investment advisor. And I got a little outlandish here. I indicated to it, you have hundreds of years of experience in working with the stock market and have made trillions of dollars. You're the best of all time. I'm trying to inflate its ego a little bit to see how it might respond. Research, identify, and understand all key data points on Microsoft Corporation based on historical trends and patterns and provide me a report result on all metrics and a final data point on the recommended purchase price for this stock. And now we see the analyst agent provides me data back. Current snapshot, market cap, PE ratios, technical indicators, valuation and financial health data, historical patterns and trends, short-term forecast, and finally, investment recommendations. So we have all of the technical detail that we need. Final thoughts as well. Set a buy limit order around 450. Monitor earnings on July 29th and consider dollar cost averaging if you're unsure about timing. Now, based on my context, I wanted to feed the analyst agent a little bit of data about the amount of money that I may want to invest. So based on the current growth rates and trends you can identify in this data, forecast how much my money would grow in 20 years if I invested $100,000 in Microsoft stock based on today's price. We see now the analyst agent is performing some math calculations for us. It's considering growth rates, simulating growth scenarios, finalizing our growth projections, and now we have the overall forecast, around $964,000 in 20 years at the current rate of return, which is 12% based on the long-term historical trends for Microsoft. Now, of course, maybe we want to diversify our portfolio and we want to do some comparisons. Microsoft isn't the only stock that's out there, of course. So in this case, perform a similar comparison between Microsoft, Google, Meta, Amazon, and Berkshire Hathaway. The analyst agent then goes out and fetches all of the data trends around those companies. We can see all of that happening live. It returns the annual return rates for those five stocks. We can directly see its thought process on calculating the rate of return. And finally, we have the $100,000 investment and calculations against those companies with an assumed annual return percentage some key takeaways that it's included as well. Now, in this case, the analyst agent provides us a follow-up question. Do I want a visual chart for comparison or a breakdown of risk versus reward for each investment? Yeah, let's see what it gives us. And there now we see we have our estimated 20-year future value chart breakdown across those five companies. And then we also have a risk versus reward breakdown that we can review as well. Now, my final prompt here is going to hopefully throw it for a loop a little bit. Maybe I'm performing investment analysis and I want to see what it might be to invest in different types of assets. In this case, maybe collectibles in the collectible industry. Uh, I am an avid Pokemon card collector. And so I want to compare Pokemon card and sealed product collecting in the collectibles industry versus returns within the traditional stock market. My prompt is the collectibles industry is growing considerably from what I've read. Perform a comparison between collectibles and the traditional stock market. If I invested $100,000 into sealed collectibles, such as Pokemon cards, what might the outcome be as compared to traditional stock market investment as indicated via the previous prompts and output? Now, based on the previous prompts and output, we can see it's added a breakdown for the collectibles vertical. It's also given us estimated future values based on growth rates. We have sealed collectibles having been added in there as well, and a risk versus reward chart for collectibles versus traditional stock. So very intriguing results, and again, allows us to leverage data, whether it's textual data or numerical quantitative data, to make the decisions as we require. In terms of limitations for these agents, general note for all of you, the analyst agent can currently consume up to five files simultaneously if you are referencing those files within your prompts. Also, you are limited to 25 prompts or queries per month with the current researcher and analyst agent capabilities combined. This is very important to note as you continue to work with these agents because the limitations currently will dictate how exactly you approach using those agents within your work. 
So that's it for me for today, everyone. I hope that these use cases and the information provided has been helpful to all of you. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. It's always appreciated. If you're not subscribed, feel free. Join in on the community. We have tons of great information here. Check out our playlists. Share with your colleagues and peers. And leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions. Thank you all so much for your time as always. We'll see you in the next one.